Hi, everybody. Have we dropped the ball on human kindness? Well, a lot of us think that perhaps we have. And we have somebody we're going to talk to today who is doing a great deal to revive, to bounce that ball back into our lives. She is Gabriella Van Rij. I spoke to her here about two years ago. She's an author. She's a lecturer. Her life is absolutely amazing. So stay with us when we return to Gabriella and find out about bringing the ball of human kindness back into our lives. But first, this segment of Conversations with Gloria Greer is brought to you by the Camelot Theatres at 2300 Barista Road in Palm Springs. And of course, the Camelot Theatres bring us the best in fine films, films from all over the world, as well as documentaries, art films. It really is the place to go to see great movies in Palm Springs. The number to call for information, 760-325-6565. All right, Gabriella, we spoke to you right after your first book came out. Yes. And it was so phenomenal to me because of your life, dropped off as an infant in a, uh, an orphanage in Pakistan, yep. and then what you did with your life. And now you want everybody to pick up the ball of human kindness. So before we talk about your life, I want to know how about you got involved <laughs> and what you're doing. Well, what's really funny is I used to dribble the ball. I go to assemblies and I actually dribble the ball. I dribble yeah. a, a simple basketball. And I say to the children, we, as a society, have dropped the ball on human kindness. Will you help me pick it up? And when I do that, um, the children actually like it. But then I throw the ball at them, mm -hmm. which I'm going to do to you. Okay. Pick up Got the it. ball. Yeah. Got it. But yeah. the children say, what do you want now, Gabriella? What, what are we supposed to do with this ball? Mm -hmm. And I say to them, this ball represents a child. It's that child that is always sitting alone in the cafeteria. It's that child that is always neglected, that feels like an outcast, that is isolated. And because of all this, it happens to be often in our society today that we don't pay attention and that they slip away from us. And this sounds very nice the way I said it, but yeah. when I say slip away, we are losing lives. We are truly losing children's lives. And I think the viewer out there forgets that the youngest child is seven years old. The youngest child that is... That commits suicide is oh seven years <gasps> old. And the oldest is somewhere, I, I'm still talking teenage years, is about mm -hmm, 20, mm -hmm. 21. Yeah. And that is not acceptable to me. Just like we shouldn't have hunger in America, I do not think that any of our children should commit suicide due to bullying and cyber torment, and just simply because we're not picking up the ball. Well, okay, but what, okay, you see, you go before the children and yes. you, throw, you throw the ball. Yes. Can I throw it back to you? Yes. But I want to keep it because <laughs> I will keep throw it, it back, <laughs> but, but I want to share it. Here we go. But I throw it to the children and I say, children, this is a reminder. It's an analogy for you in your head. When you see someone, think of that ball. Say, oh my gosh, that is that child that we're not talking to. And then they say, Gabriela, we'd like to help, but I'm embarrassed. What do I do? And I always say the same. Just go sit there. One smile. And the slogan of the ball is beautiful, and the kids get this. One moment, one person, one kindness is all it takes to help someone go from a negative space into a positive place. Because if another child sits next to you in the cafeteria, my, you're so happy that someone is sitting there. You feel not that lonely. And that's all we need. And I want to say that, and then I want to know how you got into all yeah. of this, but you, you grew up knowing what it meant to, to be have, shunned yes. at times, to be treated the way you are describing. Yes, and I think I thought, you know, I thought, honestly, in this multicultural world, nobody is shunned anymore. But it's not true. Yeah. We obviously, and I think especially after 9-11, I think 9-11 hurt all of us. And I mean, as a group, as a world group of people that are, have intelligence, we have gone back to being scared of people. We are fearful because people say to me, oh my gosh, who are you? 
Mm -hmm. You look like the people on television. Are you from Al Qaeda? And of course I'm not. You you know from my history. I have never set foot in Pakistan since I was adopted. Yeah, but you were an infant there. You were but dropped I was off an at infant the orphanage, there. and you were very fortunate mm -hmm. in that you were adopted by a wonderful family, and he was a diplomat, and so you were raised with certain lovely values things. and standards. That's right. But what I don't understand is that. We went back to uh, uh, an atmosphere where we have to be scared of each other, where we have to be scared of our neighbor. What, is, what are they doing? Are they terrorists? What, what's mm -hmm, happening? Mm -hmm. So we live in this world that is different now, again, but we have, and this is the part we forget, we have a lot of multicultural children. First of all, adoption is quite prevalent. People like Angelina Jolie, all these celebrities have put that right on the map all of right, a sudden. Right. So that's one. But second, I think, is we have a lot of children that are from an American mother, Japanese father. I, I'm just giving an example. But right. there, there's right. many examples like that. And with that come a lot of problems. And I thought it didn't happen anymore. But mm -hmm. it does. I meet children that are totally scared to go to the bathroom mm. because a child puts that smartphone under the stall and takes a video oh and my poof, God. before you know it, it's on something called Vine, which has video, or it's on YouTube, or it's on oh. Instagram, on all these things. And we parents, Gloria, the parents are clueless. It doesn't matter that you're 35 year old and that you're a good parent. I know that. I know the parents out there are good parents. But we forget that we gave something in these children's hands that they have no idea what to do with. They don't. And so they live in this technology world without etiquette of how to behave in this technology world. Nobody has taught them. See, when I grew but up, this is we were told. The, 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 OK, so this is the fault, in a sense, of the parents. You can't, ed how do you educate the parents if, if, if they are not but the truth is the parents don't know what the children are on. Uh -huh. So we have a disconnect. So how did you find all this out? Me personally, yes. I love computers. Okay. I love technology. When I heard about the probe on Mars, yeah. you know, I just looked and I, I had to watch. How it it, it, was, it yeah. was beautiful to, to be able to see a planet and know that this, this little probe does all the work and that people have worked on it for years. That's technology. That's the technology that I embrace. I embrace it that in one second I can text you or email you, and lo and behold, you answer back. That, that brings the world closer together. But the children have no real understanding about what it is that brings this world together. They use it to do what, and, and these, this is obviously my opinion, um, it's like a little bit of a reality show. Oh, it's funny. Yeah. Oh, look, ha, ha, ha. And it starts like that. And also the child that says, ha, 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 gets very popular all of a sudden. Because all the other kids say, oh, my goodness, oh, my goodness, you were great. Did you take that? Oh, la, la. And then before you know it, you can't take that back. Yeah. Because suddenly, you're that person that got really popular in school. If I was tomorrow 11 year old in a middle school, and I did something like that, I would have my mom or my dad really punish me of because course. that's how I grew up. But there is something that I learned, and I learn it every day from these kids. They don't tell their parents. Mm -hmm. There's a total disconnect about what they do on the social media and what they talk to their parents about because they know that their parents don't know these machines. They don't know the technology. And one really important thing, Gloria, really important, is parents don't realize that it's a computer. They still think about the old-fashioned phone and texting, but it's a full-fledged computer. My phone, my smartphone, mm -hmm. can do everything. I can go on LinkedIn, social media websites, I can do anything, I can take video, I can take pictures. In five seconds, it's already diffused to the world. And right. that's basically my message. Well, you know, you are spreading this message, yes. which is quite wonderful. But I mean, I don't have the figures in front of me, but you did something on uh, dropping the ball on human kindness. Yes. And it's on YouTube. 
And 50,000? Over 50. It's at 59 okay. something, and it was oh only put up two months ago. Okay. And you also have Voice America. Is that different from Voice of America? Yes. What absolutely. is Voice America? Voice America is a company that is quite reputable. I think they've existed over six years, and they have uh, radio channels on the internet because more and more people don't want to pay for radio anymore. And if you have it through internet, you can watch it on your iPhone, your smartphones, your iPads. I, I cannot even yeah. name it. You can watch it everywhere. And they do that. And they do that in several languages. So I'm on the empowerment channel with my radio. Imp all right. And so that, and that goes all over the world? All over the world, I have at the moment 45,000 listeners. <laughs> But it's growing. I have 6,000 from the interview that I did with you. Yes, <laughs> I know. Here. Isn't that great? In good old Palm Springs. <laughs> That's pretty good. I thought so. Yeah. I and think so too. we'll get more after. Today. No, but I think the reason that I'm getting viewers is I think we're fed up with always hearing negative. True. So if I go out there, and they, they're calling me in the media at the moment a prevention expert. Okay. So. It is that that I want. It's the prevention, not come in when the deed is done and we have a catastrophe on our hands. What would be nice is to show children that we have a choice, a choice in kindness. Replace bullying mm -hmm. with kindness. And, they, and they, t they take it. They don't seem to argue with it. Have you not gone back and talked to the teachers and the schools to see what the influence is after some of a them, month or so? Some of them I have. Of or course, ki kids need to be reminded constantly. Right. That's already one Correct. of the things. And that's what I try to do on the internet part. Mm -hmm. But they need to be reminded constantly. Um, I would say the schools that we have been to. How many have you been to? Oh, my gosh. I would almost have to turn my head, Bobby. <laughs> I say automatically Bobby because my manager and she's sitting there. Um, we do about three assemblies a week mm -hmm. and uh, just two days ago I did six in two days. And was that, now I know you, were, you went to San Francisco and now you're here in the desert. We are yes. sitting in Palm Desert. But how many schools did you do in LA? How, what have you been no, doing? No, I do schools when they ask me. So, to tell you the truth, unfortunately, many, many schools do not want me to come mm -hmm. because they're afraid they have to pay money. First of all, when they can't afford it, I always come. So, it's not a question of money. Money should but not... You, but you do get paid to do this. Thing, not always. When they can. <laughs> when they can, but it's really rare. Maybe a private school that has more money. But I haven't gone to the private schools. Huh? Uh, I do public schools, and I try to go there where it is so needed mm -hmm. where there is so much multiculturalism that I just go voluntarily. This whole campaign is self-funded. I'm really not asking anything. I want the school that can afford it to donate to Gabriella's foundation mm -hmm. so that I can use that money then to go to a school like a school in Detroit mm -hmm. that can't afford it at all. Uh, yeah. Because it's the schools where we don't go to that I really, really want to address. Okay, now you were living, when I first talked to you and interviewed you, you were living up in Canada. Vancouver. And now you're living yes. here. Yes. yes. I love Vancouver. I you're love You're living it. here in the United States. Yes. Do you see any difference, or is the whole concept, the way the kids act, all the same? It doesn't matter really where they the, are? They're the same kids. But two things is, I would say, uh, Canada is a melting pot that hasn't melted. Mm -hmm. And they're not willing to admit that. So there are problems in the ethnicity groups in schools, much more than parents think. And again, this is not something that kids want to talk about when they yeah. come home because it's humiliating. Yeah. And most kids hope that it goes away. Yeah. And they will keep their mouths tightly shut for years and take the abuse. And, and still grow up with that yeah. and, and never quite lose it. So, so I know the difference yeah. in America I find that the child speaks a little bit more uh -huh. to a principal or a teacher. But what if we forgot that one moment, Gloria? What, what if I'm a principal yeah. and I'm just busy on that moment and I turn that one child away that says, can, can, can you talk? And it takes all the courage to even yeah. try. Right. And you turn that child away. That's the one I'm so worried about. We are at a level that both the educators and the parents we cannot turn anyone away anymore because we don't know. And I teach that. We cannot see it from the outside. So we have to make a call in judgment. Now let me ask you, with the yeah. economy, yes. not to being 
It's a terrible. Surprise. It's terrible. Schools budgets have been cut tremendously. Yeah. So no. does that also cut down the amount of of people, not only a, a principal, but there used to be counselors. I don't know how many. I counselors would say are. all the counselors. I met one yesterday, oh. and she said, "We're only one. Mm -hmm. I need more." And I hear that complaint everyone's everywhere. So we need counselors, but yes, but there's something else that I see with the economic downfall that we're having, and not to be negative because it's on the uprise, hopefully, is that um, uh, parents have two jobs. Mm -hmm. So if you have two jobs, it means you cannot be home. Mm -hmm. If you cannot be home, your child is alone, watching whatever it wants, doing whatever it wants on the computer. And then again, I say to the parent, please don't have that second job because you only have that second job. And I know as a parent, to pay for the gadgets. Maybe if we didn't pay for the gadgets, we'd have more time with our children. That's a very interesting thought. Yes. And it's so true. They I'm smile sure. at me when I when yeah. I say that. Yeah. And you you have a daughter, correct? I have a daughter, 25 years old. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm going to go back because. Your story is so interesting. And one of the things I remember that we did discuss was the fact that you had this family that were Dutch and had blue eyes and blondish hair, and there you were. And sometime at school, some they thought you were dirty because you were darker. Yeah. So you've gone through this. I couldn't fit in. I told them yesterday in an assembly to be called peanut butter on a daily basis is just terrible. And then I said to those children, it took me forever, 30 years later, to actually try to eat peanut butter again. Because it's always a constant reminder somewhere. And, uh, you know, I think that in my time, I thought it was pretty terrible. And it took me a long time to get over it. Mm -hmm. And it took me a long time to grow into who I am. But if there's anything I've learned from it, and I hope to use it with the children today, is ownership. I took no ownership of who I was. See, my dad told me, but you're Dutch. You're not short, Gabriella. Well, let's think about this. The kids laugh when I say, am I short or not? And they go, yes, you're short. So that's ownership. You know, the little fat boy at school yeah. doesn't take ownership. It does the same what I do. I said desperately, I am Dutch. I am Dutch. Can't you see it? And the kids went, are you kidding me? Oh, of course, of course. <laughs> Of yeah, course. We're going to return to you, but first, okay. a few words from some very special people. Welcome to the magnificent Palm Springs Air Museum, located at the Palm Springs Airport, only minutes from the center of town, just off the 10 freeway at the Gene Autry exit. For group reservations and schedules, please call 760-778-6262. Experience the exciting history of aviation at the Palm Springs Air Museum. I've been totally deaf in my right ear since I was eight years old. I'm beginning to lose hearing in my other ear, but I've been working with advanced hearing systems for years, and they made it possible for me to hear as well as people with two good ears, and I am so grateful to them. Thank you for the new Anthem hearing aid. Are you wearing one? No, Radio I'm wearing man. two Anthem two? hearing aids. Oh, I love the color. Yes, da, thank da, da, you. Da, Call today for a free seven-day trial. Let us make a difference in your life. We are talking to Gabriella Van Ray, and she is determined to bring human kindness back into the world. She has this ball, and you bounce it, and she wants all the young people in the world to see the ball and to have it impact their lives and the lives of the other people around people them. around yeah okay Gabriella you have been to how many cities now this Palm Springs is the 22nd city uh-huh 22nd cities I'm doing 50 and it looks like I will also backtrack a little bit because as I do media I'm asking on the media if you want me to come to your school if I missed you feel free to Facebook me there it's so easy to get me it's a hashtag a hashtag is a number sign pick up the ball, and they will find me immediately. Mm -hmm. And so I have a feeling that we will do a lot more cities than just 50. Okay, now, one of the, your great desires, yes. can't blame you, is to have this ball reach the president I so would that like, he can pass it along, right? I would like this ball to stay forever in the White House, also as a reminder for mm -hmm. kindness, because kindness is needed everywhere. Well, I was going to say, um, I hadn't thought of it until we said that, but there needs a little kindness in Congress. 
there needs to be kindness in our governments, there needs to be kindness everywhere. We're always so readily to, to, to play the blame game. And that's again what I mean with ownership. If I'm teaching a child to be proud that it's chubby, and I call it in the classroom fluffy. That's cute. So let's just be proud to be fluffy. I'm proud to be short. It doesn't matter. And if I need help because I need to reach the cookies on the highest aisle and the shelf in the supermarket, I ask for it. So do I. Right? <laughs> you do too. But in the beginning, it is hard to learn that. And in government, I think it's hard too. We make mistakes, but we learn from them and we move on. And one of the reasons I want to bring it to Obama, I need to tell you this, is because although I was born in the same year that JFK got assassinated, mm. I heard about it, of course, like every human being. I learned about it in history books. But JFK said something, and I always say it wrong, so please help me a little bit on this. But he said, it's not what you can do it's not what your country can do for you, it's what you can do for your country. And I don't know why, but I have embodied that quote. I think from, it's a wonderful quote. From the youngest And I'm not of hearing ages. that quote Anymore. right now. I know. No, not at all. So that's how I started. I started mm -hmm. on November 22nd at the commemoration of JFK. And I kicked it off in California because I seem to have <laughs> Uh, an enormous liking with California. California seems to like me too. And so I kicked it off because there are two quotes. That's one. I think um, the commemoration this year for Martin Luther King is really important. I have a dream. Mm -hmm. And last but not least, one that we forget too. Gandhi said, uh, be the change, I think, or, or uh, embody the change, something like that. And I say, be the difference. I think we can do that. And I have people, and I really want to tell you that, that I meet at the airports with the ball that say, oh, it's really courageous, but go home. Really? Yes. I wanted you to know that. Go home, Gabriella. But why would they say that? Because one person cannot do it. And I said, yes, of course, because I keep giving the ball. And it's that one person that comes home and that's suddenly reminded of something that I said, and he or she might do it for whoever is in front of them. And that's all that matters to me. Since you are on social media, yes. uh, do you find that any of these young people that you speak to at the schools con contact yes. you then? I get um, private Facebook messages mm -hmm. every day. Would you help me? I've been bullied so many years. Nobody is listening. The principal isn't this, that. Please help me. I also get emails from the parents, mm -hmm. and my email is readily available, so it's not as if it's a, a secret. And I'm always willing to help, always willing to answer, but this is one of the reasons that I started this. We cannot help if we don't change our legislation nationwide, not one state at a time. The police officers have no idea what to do. Parents have no idea what to do. Educators have no idea what to do. I would like to see, with Obama, if he lets me, I would like the chance to tell him how to make a driver's license for social media, how to behave, because we don't know. And parents out there, if you're listening, I see posts that are terrible that adults post on this internet, and our children see that. We have to be the example. I never post anything personal because, first of all, I think it's nobody's business. And second of all, I do not think it interests anyone. But if that's what you're going to do, don't say something negative about the other person that is actually your friend. And this is what we need to teach children. It's not funny. It's just not funny. No, not at all. No. OK, you've, you're writing another book. Yes. Yeah. But, with it's all my finished. might was your first book, yes. which was marvelous. And I, if the, how can people get that book? Amazon.com okay, is thank the you. best way. Now tell me about the one you're on now. The new book is I Can Find My Might, and it's for children and educators, I would say. And maybe a parent wants to read it to their children. It's a book where I take all the experiences that I've had. So the first five chapters are about my youth, mm -hmm. where I talk in child form, where I literally say, why, why won't you play with me? Why do you say that I'm, I'm you know, a bad person because I got abandoned as a baby? You know, I, I go through all those emotions in these chapters. 
I, just like I did in the adult book, but much more emotional. Most children will cry when they read it. And in the next chapters, it's only positive. What I see in the schools and how what I've learned with the ownership, we can turn around into something positive. Okay, how can our viewers, how can they reach you? Reach me by hashtag pick up the ball or otherwise the ball of kindness, GabriellaVonRay.com. And I know that's very difficult, but it's going to be uh, under the screen so that you can see that. And otherwise, um, go to any social media and just type pick up the ball and you will find me in seconds. Mm -hmm. So on social media, rather than going for your name, it's pick up the ball. Pick up the ball, hashtag pick up the ball. And one of the things that I'm asking everyone to do, if you see this, change your social media icons in everything, LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, everything. Change it to the ball, please. I would like six million people, that's less than 10% of the American population, to change that so that we have President Obama paying attention to this. It's a movement. Kindness is a choice. I want to thank you so much. You are just wonderful, and it's been so great to see you again. As I said when you walked in, I knew when I interviewed you before I wanted to see you again. I knew that too. Yeah, and we'll be watching, and we'll have to keep the ball going. We will. It has to keep rolling. Right. Thank you so much, and I hope that you will be back with us next time.